Hi, you 11. This is Mr Blaney. I'm here to talk to you about the theme of ambition in Macbeth and how this is displayed. So in many ways, ambition is Macbeth's fatal flaw as the tragic hero of the play. It's important to remember that he begins as a man who is admired throughout the whole of Scottish society. He's described as brave and noble by both the king and the captain. However, it can be argued that his ambition is what eventually leads him down that bloody path, committing all those murders and eventually leading to his death. And it's that ambition to be king. Obviously, the second he hears the witches tell him that he's going to be king, it begins that downward spiral for him. And we're left asking the question, was that ambition always there or did the witches put, him in, put it into him? And that's kind of the point where you can evaluate in the play. Did he always want to be king or not? So some quotations that you can consider when writing about this. There's lots of different bits that you can write about when it comes to ambition. So I've just picked out um, a small number that we can talk about in a bit more detail. I think an important point to remember is that Macbeth knows what he's doing is wrong. He knows that being king is wrong and goes against what is expected from him in society. So one quotation is, Stars, hide your fires. Let not night see my black and deep desires. So that use of black shown, he knows that what he is doing is evil. But the fact that these desires are deep is again a hint that maybe it's been there longer than we thought, that he's always maybe dreamt of the idea of being king. He's a man who wants to get ahead. So that idea that he knows what he is doing, but ambition drives him to commit evil acts is really important. It sort of means he is to blame for what he is doing. A second one comes from Lady Macbeth herself. Now, Lady Macbeth knows Macbeth very well. She's, of course, his wife. They seem to have a very good relationship, calling him my dearest partner of greatness. And the quotation I would look at is where she says, Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend. And that's quite important because even Lady Macbeth acknowledges that her husband does have ambitions. She knows that he wants to succeed in life. But... Her opinion is that he's too worried about doing evil things in order to get there. And maybe this is Shakespeare acknowledging that ambitious people, in order to get to the top, do have to do some pretty morally questionable things that maybe they shouldn't be doing. And it's nice to see that Macbeth does have that sort of good in him. He, he doesn't want to be evil. He probably enjoyed being admired. He enjoyed the fact that he was liked by other people. But to become king, he knows he's going to have to do things that are wrong, as the way the whole of society sees it. He says himself, I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition. So what he's basically saying there is, there's absolutely no reason for me to kill Duncan. I don't need to do it, but it's his ambition. He, want, he wants that position. He wants to go from being the lord to being the king. It's all about moving up in the world for him. That word vaulting is really important. If you think about someone doing the pole vault, the way it leaps them up much higher than they could naturally go, that's the kind of thing that he's doing. He knows he's going beyond his natural station by committing these evil deeds. And that really is the cusp of the whole play with Macbeth, is his ambition driving him forward to commit acts that get progressively worse. So he does kill his king, he kills his best friend, he then kills children. So as you can see, he's basically sacrificing his soul on the altar of his own ambition because he wants to be king so badly. And Shakespeare really explores what ambition can do to a person the effect that it can have on him. And it's really interesting when we look at Macbeth at the end of the play, when it's all closing in on him, when the king's on his about, when Malcolm is about to invade, his wife is dead, the way he talks about life, he's really lost all that ambition, he's lost all that drive that he once had. And he says, the final quote that I've picked out, describing his own life almost, it is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And that idea of life signifying nothing for Macbeth now is so important because he just can't bring himself to care anymore. He's committed all these evil deeds. He sees himself perhaps as the idiot for having succumbed 
to his ambitions for having given in to them. And now it all means nothing to him. And really, he's punished at the end of the play because he dies and he suffers um, quite a humiliating death, having his being beheaded, being insulted, and everyone hates him. He's seen now as a tyrant, as an evil man, and everyone is delighted to see him dead. It's really important thinking about Scottish society at the time, and also at Shakespeare's time. Macbeth here is really, you could say, from what Shakespeare is doing, that he is offering a warning against the dangers of being too ambitious. Now, we often see ambition as a good thing, but taken too far, can it actually be a, a flaw in our character? And this fits into very much the sort of society at the time. They really believed the king was made the king by God. So if you're trying to move into that position, you're being too ambitious. And that really comes down to the idea of uncontrolled ambition. That's the problem for Shakespeare. And really it's about evaluating in this play, how much Macbeth can be blamed for what happens to him and how much is it just his own ambition that drives him to commit the evil deeds that he does. So I hope some of those things are helpful for you if you do get a question. Remember, any question that you get on Macbeth as a character, ambition can come into it because you can talk about that being his driving, motivating factor for everything he does. Good luck with your exams.